fossil fuels will be an exciting uh, field for investors and a lot of uh, new developments will be happening. So I think I encourage everybody to keep a close look at them. Now, last week, a series of World Climate Change Talks ended in Bonn. Now, as we know, fossil fuels is one of the main culprits for global warming. But for fossil fuels, taking a closer look at them, can we live without them? Do we still need fossil fuels so dependently? Well, I'm afraid that we actually do need fossil fuels. There is no doubt that the fossil fuels are indeed the main culprit of what we call global warming or climate change. However, uh, the current situation is that when you think about our global energy supply, 80% of our all energy needs still come from fossil fuels. This has been the case for many years, certainly since those climate talks started, and there is no trend that points downwards. Any scenario that talks about, that looks into how we'll use energy in the future, does not predict the share of fossil fuels going below 40%, so either 40, 60, 80%. So no matter how we look at it, fossil fuels we use today and we will be continuing to using them in the future. Is there a way that you can use fossil fuels more sustainably, in your opinion? If we use this premise that we do use fossil fuels and we will be continuing using them, of course, we should not try to pretend it's not the case. We should really put them in the public discourse and try to find the ways what we can possibly do to use them more efficiently and sustainably. There are, of course, a few things. For example, some of fossil fuels are used uh, in thermal power plants to use, produce our electricity. As a matter of fact, two out of three electrons that we use today, even in this studio and everywhere, come from fossil fuels. Uh, however, the efficiency of such plants has increased not very much, maybe from 32% globally to 35 over a period of 25 years. So we can certainly go much higher, we can do much better, we can use it more efficiently, and this might be the way that pro provides the most bang for your dollar, if you wish. Uh, another po possibility is if we do use them and if we do produce carbon dioxide, we can uh, think about uh, technologies such as carbon capture and storage, which means that we try to take the carbon in power plants and elsewhere and put it underground in some geological situation where it will be kept for many, many centuries. In this way, we would be able to use the fossil fuels and not increase concentration of CO2. However, uh, this technology is still developing. There are many obstacles, a lot of investment is needed. And so we are actually just starting it now. And from a perspective of an investor, should they stay away from items such as coal, oil and gas? Oil and gas is still the biggest world's industry. And uh, uh, although the share of coal in our total primary energy supply has decreased slightly in the last few years, the share of oil is increasing, the share of natural gas is increasing. So it would be nice if we can say we do not need them, but since we are using them and possibly increasingly so, uh, definitely Investments will be needed to find more resources, but also investments will be needed to see how the fossil fuels can be used, as I said earlier, in a more efficient way, including carbon capture and storage. So definitely fossil fuels will be an exciting uh, field for investors and a lot of uh, new developments will be happening. So I think I encourage everybody to keep a close look at them. Fantastic. And just finally, how are different countries seeing this? Because we've spoken about the difference in fossil fuels, but how are different countries reacting to these issues with climate change? Mostly the differences depend on what proportion of their energy come from fossil fuels. Countries such as uh, China, United States, India rely a lot of fossil fuels. Even Germany, that is actually a pioneer or, or a leader in renewable energy deployment, still depends to about 67% on fossil fuels. Some countries do promote or are trying to find the ways to use coal more efficiently. Some countries are totally opposed to it. Uh, a recent change that happened is the, in the United States, as you probably know, the new administration that started about a year ago has changed its course towards the climate talks and the use of fossil fuels. It caused a lot of controversies, which again stimulated some other countries to take a more 
anti-coal stance, such as maybe Canada or the United Kingdom. So anyhow, the, the use of coal uh, is in the, in the center of the discourse. So many countries changing positions, you have surprising allies and surprising enemies over this. So it's a very dynamic and fluid situation in my view. Well, Branka, thank you so much for coming today and sharing your insights on such an important matter. Thank you, Jessica, for having me. It was a real pleasure. You're very welcome. Well, that's all from us here in the Geneva Studios, but we want to hear how you found this interview. So please do like and comment on dukascopy.tv.